What's up everybody, it's Onglor. Pagan Online has been in full release now for about two weeks, and there has been an influx of new players, which is awesome to see. So I want to make a video sharing some beginner tips and tricks with you guys. Also, if you're an experienced player watching this video and could get in a time machine and go back and do things differently, please leave some tips for the new players in the description as well because this video is all about helping the new player be the best that they could be in Pagan Online. So let's get started. One of the questions that I commonly see asked is how to get to Legacy Rank 7 so you can start using that in-game gear and also how to get your characters to level 30 fast and efficiently. So I'm going to share with you guys the method that I use. So let's say I leveled Luki into 30. I would do a couple of level 40 to 50 missions uh, and simply just give the gear to the other character I want to level. So let's say the next character I want to level is Morkoth. This is what I would do. So I would take the gear that I have on Lucian right now, simply take it off and leave it in my inventory like so. Then I would go to Morkoth and give him the gear. And also it's good to note when you're leveling on the higher missions, I always look to gather the weapon for different heroes at our higher quality level. Meaning I would grab Valeria weapons, Morkoth, and yeah, whoever I could. So when you use this method, you can also have a much better weapon waiting for them in your stash. You can just grab it out and put it on your character because when you're just leveling really fast, the gear stats don't matter all that much. It's just getting to the end game. And using this method, just sharing your best gear between your characters will work efficiently. And also, when you are leveling, I highly recommend... So let's say here our Morkoth is level 1. I would go to the battle gate and find a mission and set it to the highest you can do. Or, you know, you can handle and just go from there and before you know it the levels will fly very fast. Okay so now we're going to get into looking at our abilities for a character and actually creating a build. So one of my favorite characters or my main character is Anya. We're going to be taking a look at her abilities and it's also important to note the type of damage our ability does. So let's have a look. Okay so Bloodsucker does physical damage by 200%. Heartbeat physical damage okay blood bolt physical damage so also I take in mind what type of damage the end result does meaning at the end of the node so as we can see here uh, our blood bolt this node it explodes after two seconds doing 80% cold damage nice nice also another ability I use is altar of gore and as you can see here, it gains an additional charge. And also, uh, when an enemy dies, and it, uh, it's impaled and exposed for 450% cold damage. So I notice there's cold damage, physical damage going on. And I know she's an intelligence character. So now I have like the wheels turning here. So the way I like to build her is Blood Bolt because that is like the core of her build. So I'm going to go around that for right now. So... I would, you know, take this and then take that and the three charges is really nice. So I would start looking over the left click abilities, seeing uh, some more of the passives and just go from there. So there's also something I want to show you guys as well. As you can see here, the physical damage for Blood Bolt is 300%. Now. I am hovering over my ability and then I'm hitting left click again. As you can see, the node turns blue and the physical damage has gone up from 300 to 340%. Now, before I click on the last node, there's something to keep note of here. My ability points right now are at 16 of 30. I click it one more time. As you can see, my node tree turns a different color and now it does 380% physical damage. Also, it takes more points because I've seen a lot of people asking how to change the nodes. So that's how you do it. You simply just do what you want. Left click a couple times. I'm going to do it again until I have nothing. So let's say, actually, let's go up here to swarm. 
because I really do like Vortex. Now we place it there. Let's say if we want to do more physical damage, I just simply click a couple times and the color has changed. So like I said, it's always good to see what type of damage it's doing, uh, how many abilities you want to use, and that's when you're going to determine, well, do I want to up the damage of the abilities that I have now or keep it as it is. So, you know, building your characters is really fun. Now, that's going to tie into our gearing section. Okay, so we have been enjoying the story for Pagan Online and also doing some missions gathering up all this gear. Now the question is, what to wear? So as we just discussed, we know that Anya likes to do physical damage along with cold damage. So I want to check her primary stats. I'm going to head on over to the Hero Forge and take a look at what she likes to do. Intelligence, Fortitude, Dexterity, and lastly Strength. So with all the information that we just gathered, I want to build Anya with physical damage, cold damage, intelligence, along with some fortitude. Fortitude is very important, and if we can, we'll get our hands on some dexterity. So, as you can see here, my gear isn't perfect. I'm still trying to work with what I got. So, a couple of pieces of gear that I have do have intelligence, cold damage, physical damage, uh, some crit attack speed etc so like I said I'm still trying to work on my gear now another important thing to note is when you are getting gear as well these are very important you want to try to get them to around 75 percent because once you start entering the more harder content such as hard mode and master mode your stats will go down also it's good to note the astral shield as well I know that is a personal preference for some people and personally I do like the astral shield for my you know intelligence characters and for my damage characters I tend to focus on you know armor so it's a personal preference and if you're having trouble with some builds or have some questions about stats there are a lot of great pagan online streamers that will be more than happy to answer them including myself you can come on buy my string, hang out, ask me some questions, or simply ask me in the description below. So now that we got our build set up and our gear going, it's time to hit in-game content. Okay my friends, we have our abilities and our gear. Now we are ready for in-game content. Before I jump into the nitty gritty, I want to talk to you guys about forms of currency that are very important you'll be picking up along the way. I highly recommend you start doing hunts as soon as possible because not only do you get gold but you're going to get sacred offerings and what that is used for is to gain access to the fable forge so you might be thinking my friend what is this fable forge you speak of so as you can see here it's going to take 10 sacred offerings to enter once inside and you complete the mission you know killing the boss you will gain access to the forge and be able to put more properties on your legendary weapon for your hero. How cool is that? Another important form of currency is the Talisman of Wisdom. Now, in order to make one of these, you're going to need five Wisdom Stones. Now you might be thinking, well, how do I acquire these Wisdom Stones? It's pretty simple, my friend. As you can see here, there are threats that pop up, you know every so often once you complete those the chest will drop a wisdom stone for you so it's very important you do these threats as often as you can because you're gonna need those uh, stones to get more you know ability points which is pretty cool also these fog fiends are very important as well and they drop from assassinations what these fog fiends do is it's a key to the ruin cage or the shroud cage and that cage once you complete it and defeat the boss will drop either a recipe or a blueprint depending on your luck so it's very important to keep out or keep an eye out for these fog fiends and keep in mind that the key is as you can see here like a gray color so whenever you complete an assassination make sure to keep an eye out for that key now that we have all these keys and stones you might be thinking well where do we access these 
things. You can find them in level 41 to 50 missions doing expeditions or patrols. The cage looks like an actual cage and the place you get your extra potency points kind of looks like a fountain or a shrine and I put pictures you know in the video so you guys can see what they look like and that there is no mistake. So now that we also have in game there are missions that we need to do as well. So as you can see here we have various types of missions. Now the missions I like to do are pretty much level 48. So let's say for instance you know this is level 48 right now but we want to do this mission on level 48. So what we can do is if I hit reroll now let's check what level it is. Now it's 49 so actually I would take level 49 but as you can see here by simply re-rolling the missions you can make it either a higher level or lower and I like doing this because to me level 48 is the sweet spot for getting gear but if you feel like missions are a little bit too difficult or you would like to do something a little bit lower you can just keep rolling until you get the level of you know the mission that you want also we have assassinations which drop the hero shard so you can get those really cool looking skins for the heroes that you like and also we have the gauntlet which is kind of a test of might it's you know you go in there and you survive wave after wave after wave and reap the reward so you might be wondering to yourself well what type of rewards are within these missions and assassinations that's a very good question my friend so let's have a look see first with the missions let's say we want to do this now if I click on this chest I can see the rewards I will get for doing normal difficulty okay so let's say I bump it up to hard mode I can also see that the keys that I get from it some mats some gold and whatnot and if I go to master difficulty I can see that I get more keys more mats so doing it on a higher difficulty will drop more mats and greater chances for drops for recipes as well so let's take a look at the gauntlet here as we can see here the rewards are some mats some gold and whatnot for normal hard mode oh there's a purple recipe along with the mats as well and with the master difficulty legendary recipe and epic recipe and you definitely want to get your hands on your legendary recipe and that's definitely something to work towards also you can see the types of enemies within the missions the gauntlet you're going to have many many types of enemies coming at you so let's say we're looking at a mission here to try to complete with our hunt and we're having difficulty locating where the enemies are well if we click on the enemies tab we can see the type of enemies that will pop within this mission and that is extremely helpful as well also with the end game content we just talked about doing missions re-rolling for higher missions and doing the gauntlet here there's also something called the school of magic and I actually have a hero in the full school of magic actually two of them so I want to show you guys what that's about right now we have King Witch who was very happy to be here and see you guys so as you can see here we have schools of magic as well and what that does is it gives you additional stats all around to your character and as you can see here I'm using the Titan Forward it's not the best rolled and I'm still going for it but I'm using it because it's giving me a boost of stats and I'm having no difficulty right now completing things on normal and hard mode with King Witch. I'm working towards master mode. As you can see here, once you start getting the schools of magic, it comes in increments of you get a three piece bonus, a five piece, and then you get your entire eight piece bonus, which as you can see here, gives us really cool wings and an aura around us as well so I'm going to actually zoom in again so that's something to shoot for as well so you can just go into let's say the master mode gauntlet and just one shot everything so yeah I think the wings and aura look really cool around the character I really hope that all this information I presented to you guys helps you with your journey for pagan online also, as I stated before at the start of the video, 
if you are an experienced player and would like to also offer some advice to somebody who's just starting out, please leave some helpful stuff in the description below. Also, if you're looking to get your hands on the Elden and Hector shards and souls to be able to play those characters and get the cool skin, please check the description below as well and I will tell you guys how to acquire them. So I really want to thank you guys for watching this video today. Sorry it was a rather long one, but there was a lot of information to get out there. If this is your first time in the channel, please hit that subscribe button and then smash that like button. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care and kill those bosses.